This is Talking Point on Stat News Global. I'm Amitabh Rebi. Joining us live from Moscow is Dr. Alexei Kubrianov. He is the head of the research group at the South Asia and Indian Ocean region at Imimo Rai. That's the Primakov Institute yes, of World Economics and International Relations of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Dr. Kupriyanov, Zdrasthe, Dobri Vecher, and Spasiva for coming on to Strat News Global. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> also, Nanda Runekrishnan, a Russian specialist. Uh, we could actually have this conversation in Russian, though I'll have to keep getting back into English. Nandan is a Russia specialist and distinguished fellow at the Observer Research Foundation. And then thanks again for giving us your time. Just looking at uh, Foreign Secretary Harsh Shringla's visit, two-day visit to uh, Moscow. This is the first visit that he's carrying out abroad this year. We've had the Foreign Minister go to other neighboring countries as well. But uh, one of the questions that was often raised even while talking about India-Russia ties was the geopolitical situation and now India and China, of course, are disengaging in Eastern Ladakh. But that question often popped up. And if you go back in time a few months when uh, both the foreign minister and the defense minister were in Moscow, they met their Chinese counterparts. There were five points that were agreed there. Let's just listen in to a question that uh, Foreign Secretary Harshingla was asked at the Diplomatic uh, Academy at the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in uh, Moscow on uh, China and uh, how India was uh, dealing with that situation, especially because of the relationship it has with Russia. Oh, that uh, our foreign ministers met, for, you know, during this crisis, uh, during COVID times last year, it was in Moscow that our defense ministers met. I'm talking about the foreign ministers and defense ministers of India and China met in Moscow. So I think uh, that itself is significant. I mean, we are comfortable here. Uh, we are among friends and uh, when you talk about uh, a specially privileged strategic partnership, then we, uh, you know, obviously an understanding of the sensitivities and concerns that India has uh, in the Russian, uh, uh, I would say, foreign policy space is, is an important uh, factor. Alexei, just bringing you in on that, uh, because the first face-to-face -face meeting during this almost a 10-month long standoff between India and China was in Moscow in September between the two foreign ministers of the two sides. Of course, Russia has made its position clear that uh, it's not a mediator, it's not an intermediary unless both sides want. But as the foreign secretary pointed out there, India is comfortable in that environment. And even though it was uh, the SCO or RIC, where they talked on the sidelines, that uh, did help the two sides, right? I think yes. Uh, but, sir, there, there is a problem well in uh, Russian relations with China and with India because yeah. the issue of relations between India and China is very painful for us because both India and China are our strategic partners so we do not like it when they quarrel. Well, in uh, our opinion, the main problem of India and China is mutual misunderstanding and mistrust. We uh, try to solve this problem as we can. Nandan, we've spoken about this uh, earlier before um, when you talked about how Russia should be judged on its actions. And uh, whenever India has gone there, the defense minister went there, he asked for speeding up of, say, the S-400 uh, scheduling, he asked for, for further military equipment uh, in terms of jets and other armament as well. Uh, China has a special relationship with Russia as well as uh, India has one with Russia. I'm going to ask you that question again. How does India deal with the bilateral relations with uh, Moscow when Moscow has such a special relationship with China as well? You know, when the foreign secretary was asked uh, in Moscow about the relationship be between India and Russia and between India and the USA, he said that these two relationships stand separately and alone, and India has partnerships with both the United States, a global partnership, as well as a partnership with uh, Russia. 
So I suspect that the same applies in this case to Russia. So Russia's relationship with us stands alone and Russia's relationship with China is separate. Russia is not attempting to interfere in our relationship with China. It believes that it, whatever problems we have with China, it is something for India and China to resolve. The only thing that Russia sort of uh, uh, says and does from what I've seen in the past 12 months is that Russia is sometimes uh, willing to offer the platform at which the two countries can meet on the sidelines of various meetings like RIC, SCO, as you mentioned. So personally, I do not see a problem from an Indian standpoint of view. I do, of course, understand, as Alexei said, that it puts Russia into a very uh, uncomfortable situation. And uh, obviously, Russia does not want to be pushed to a position where it may have to choose. And as long as that situation is avoided, I think uh, we should be able to progress without uh, much problem. Uh, Dr. Kupriyanov, uh, Alexei, when you talk about uh, is Russia being put in a tough spot, because there is a lot of commentary here in India, which uh, suggests that if India has such a close, special and strategic partnership with uh, Russia, then uh, it, it should be also forced to choose, especially because India is the only country which is uh, facing off with China where there has been loss of life. Um, uh, well, uh, in fact, uh, we had, uh, it was not uh, long ago, well, we had some problems with China as well, as you had. Uh, well, it was uh, not very comfortable for us, you know, because, uh, well, we lost our lives on Damansky Island, for example, on Jalanskol in the uh, 60s. But then, uh, well, we solved our problem with China, and now we are trying to help you <laughs> to solve this problem, as we can, of course. Uh, Nandan, you mentioned uh, how the Foreign Secretary was asked about the US and, and in China as well. Now, the Russian position on, say, uh, the Indo-Pacific, the Asia-Pacific, as it was called earlier by even the US administration and Russia, I think, uh, also likes to call it that. I just want to go back to a question again that was posed to the Foreign Secretary exactly on the issue of uh, the Indo-Pacific, because we've also been trying to get uh, Russia in some manner into our inclusive uh, Indo-Pacific uh, strategy. Uh, just listening in to what uh, the Foreign Secretary said when he was asked this question in Moscow. Uh, BC is uh, an Indo-Pacific in which we have a common agenda in terms of a positive common agenda. Uh, we earlier discussed uh, the operationalization of the Vladivostok Chennai, a line that really comes from close to the Arctic, the Russian Far East, uh, you know, from Siberia down to uh, Vladivostok, and then, uh, you know, you have uh, the movement of goods between India and the Russian Far East. Now, there can't be a better uh, example of practical, uh, concrete cooperation uh, in the Indo-Pacific region than that. Uh, you are a very strong, uh, I mean, uh, uh, let's say, power in the Pacific. Uh, we uh, are uh, very much prevalent in the Indian Ocean. Uh, both of us uh, uh, foster exchanges uh, of, a, of a nature that is uh, positive, good for people, for both our countries. We establish synergies there. Dr. Kupriyanov, uh, we do know Russia's concerns with uh, the U.S. leading the Indo-Pacific uh, strategy and not being inclusive of uh, trying to con constrain China or to disclude China. But in the current context, there is also a quad where India is part of. How does Russia really view um, how India is dealing with China in other spheres, which is the Indo-Pacific and the quad? Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Kupriyanev. I think we're losing your line a bit, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. So uh, the Russian concept of the Asia Pacific and how it views New Delhi, say, using the Quad as uh, uh, another dimension when it has to deal with China. Uh, yeah, you know that our experts mainly pay attention to the fact that the United States has its own in the Pacific strategy. They do not always understand that the Indian and in the Pacific is different from the American one. Uh, yeah, I remember that, yeah, before last, uh, uh, I was in Sochi on World Day Club and attended meeting with President Putin. I remember as Nandan asked him about in the Pacific and Putin answered that we are not again against any strategies if it's inclusive and aimed at cooperation of all players without exception and not an attempt to create a military bloc. So you can call the strategy or vision whatever you want. And uh, now we are having a very heated discussion among Russian scholars about in the Pacific. Uh, and uh, well, the Indian embassy is doing a lot for this, uh, but more time is needed, I think. And I think everything will be fine with time uh, in our understanding of you in the Pacific. Uh, and I think, saw, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, uh, go ahead, Mr. Uh, Dr. Kupian. Yeah, I, I think I think maybe we will have our own in the Pacific concept when we understand uh, at last that we can have our own in the Pacific that uh, can correspond with the Indian in the Pacific concept. Now that we saw those uh, comments by the Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov at uh, RIAC, I think it was uh, early December, but he made the same here in Raisina Dialogues last year, January 2020, when he was questioning the US and its motives. Soon after that, uh, the Indian Foreign Ministry spokesperson also had to clarify India's position both on the Quad and whether India was falling into that game uh, against China. But how do you uh, view the way India is playing both its necessities. One is to keep up its relations with Russia and dealing with what's happening with China. Well, you know, India does not have an easy relationship with China at this point of time. And uh, obviously, India is driven primarily by the fact that we want a multipolar world. We want a multipolar Asia. And therefore, India will pursue whatever policies are required to achieve that aim. And I think uh, you cannot really get better than what Mr. Modi uh, described India's vision of, 20, uh, of uh, the Indo-Pacific at the Shangri-La meeting in 2018. I mean, that was uh, the uh, best way to describe it. It's inclusive. We are for a free uh indo-pacific and anyone who supports that is welcome to join that's exactly what we're playing out uh anurag shivastav's uh, comments uh, soon after uh, sergey lavrov's that about shangri la is mentioned there india does not see as a strategy uh, indo-pacific region as a strategy as a or as a club of limited members inclusive open region india has always pursued an independent uh, foreign policy just want to take in some of uh, the questions we're getting in from our viewers uh, Take, uh, it may be slightly biased because I do know one of this uh, viewers, Salvatore Babon, is from Australia, who asks, and uh, Dr. Kupurano, if I can go to you, is there really any trust between Russia and China, or is the relationship strictly cash and carry? Uh, well, not very difficult question, but uh, I have to to choose my words, okay? Russia is an independent player, uh, and this is our basic imperative uh, to abandon, uh, well, uh, to abandon this imperative is to abandon our course of our foreign policy altogether. I hope uh, this does not happen anytime soon. Uh, now we maintain friendly neutrality towards China in accordance with the formula, not always together, but never against. Uh, the problem is that we are under sanctions from the Western countries, uh, which are literally pushing us into the alliance with China. I don't know why they are doing this, but this is a rather short-sighted policy. I, uh, now we can, uh, now we trust China, in fact. It was not easy for us uh, to study, well, to study this uh, game of trust to study this understanding of China, but now uh, 
we solve our problems. If I may add here, if I may add here, one is, of course, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Salvatore Babones on an excellent article he wrote recently about uh, the uh, policy the US should follow vis-a-vis India-Russia relations. And taking off from there, I think uh, in a multipolar world, all countries are going to seek to have uh, operational relationships with all other major powers. And it is, I mean, it is a given that there will be areas in which you're going to step on somebody's toes or shoulders are going to rub. So there will also have to be ways of ensuring that these uh, differences do not escalate into conflict. And I think uh, there are enough problems the world is facing which cannot be resolved without uh, cooperation of all parties involved. I mean, climate change, international terrorism, the list is endless. Yeah. Dr. Kupriyanov, uh, when you're talking about Russia and China and uh, the trust that has been built up now after decades that you say, what's the Russian position on uh, China's aggressive behavior, whether it's in the South China Sea, the East China Sea, uh, and Ladakh, even though it doesn't want to interfere between the two. And I'm just going to take a related uh, question from a viewer uh, who says, Ame Vadnekar, what is Russia's uh, position vis-a-vis -vis China creating artificial islands in the South China Sea? Overall, Dr. Kupianov. In fact, we don't have any position on this because we think it's a... Uh, well, it's a problem of uh, bilateral relations of China and its neighbors. And uh, as usual, we can help to solve this problem uh, through our, well, to, to give a place for meeting, yeah, for example. But in fact, South China Sea and uh, Ladakh, uh, they're not so close to our borders. And we think that it's a problem of without our sphere of interest, I'd like to say. Right. And then just going back to the point that uh, Dr. Kupriyanov had made earlier when he said uh, it is strange or he feels that it's strange uh, that uh, Russia is being forced into uh, China's hand because of the U.S. posture, U.S. sanctions uh, against Russia. Your views on that? No, undoubtedly. I mean, of course, there is... Uh when uh, somebody says that Russia is forced to do something, uh, that also implies that Russia has no agency. I don't think the Russians would accept that. The point is, yes, they are the policy of the West of attempting to isolate uh, Russia is uh, uh, encouraging Russia, if I may put it like that, to find other partners. And obviously the most dominant because it is the second largest, it is the largest economy in the world by some parameters. And it is also uh, a close neighbor of Russia. China is one of those uh, partners. But <clears throat> at the same time, I'm sorry, uh, at the same time, I have to uh, acknowledge that Russia is in this relationship more voluntarily than forced. Russia's pivot to Asia started before sanctions of the West came. Russia's pivot to Asia, uh, Mr. Putin wrote an article about it in 2011, just because before he became president again. So there was a clear-cut policy in which Russia was going to pursue a closer relationship with Asian powers. Uh, what else can I add? Yeah, uh, Dr. Kupriyanov, the mirror image of that, uh, because it was brought up in questions to Foreign Secretary Shingla as well, where Russia sees India being forced into uh, the American corner because of what uh, is happening with China. And if Russia doesn't have an, a stand or a policy vis-a-vis -vis what's happening in China's backyard, uh, it, it certainly has a stand vis-a-vis -vis the Quad, right? Especially maritime exercises that the four countries are uh, Conducting, Dr. Kupiana? Yes, absolutely right. We are against the quad. Uh, it's our, well, uh, 
it's our position well because uh, uh, look in fact uh, mm, I'd like to say that uh, for us what is uh, we understand that what is anti Chinese firstly on uh, anti Chinese uh, structure well anti Chinese body uh, and uh, well and uh, created well uh, aimed uh, at curbing Chinese growth and this uh, from our point of view uh, <clears throat> we uh, cannot guarantee that after the containment China uh, United States and the allies will try to contain Russian growth uh, in on Pacific well theater as well so where uh, it's uh, I cannot uh, Word, uh Mr. Lavrov speech, but I remember uh, his main idea that uh, we are for uh, inclusive and united region and region of cooperation, and we seek what as the bodies that was created to uh, exclude China from this region. So it's why we're against what. Another uh, major part of India and Russia's relationship is, of course, uh, defense. And we saw the defense minister going twice last year during the pandemic, once for the 75th anniversary of uh, victory celebrations of World War II, where there's a 75 member Indian contingent also participating, marching in Red Square, and then the SCO meeting where there was uh, on the sidelines meeting with the Chinese as well. In terms of uh, the big ticket, that we are expecting, and Mr. Shingla himself said that in, in the few in next few months, expect some big developments. I presume he was talking about uh, the summit, which wasn't held uh, last year between President Putin and Prime Minister Modi, and uh, possibly the first batch or first squadron of the S 400s Just listening to a question that uh, he answered when he was asked about defense cooperation between India and Russia. Our two uh, sides are working very closely on uh, development of uh, uh, the manufacture of what we call the BrahMos missile uh, system, which is licensed production of India of the Sukhoi 30 aircraft, T-90s tanks. Uh, if you see our Republic Day parade uh, on the 26th of January this year, uh, a lot of the platforms that you saw were Russian platforms, and uh, I think that is a measure of the cooperation that we have in the defense sector. We now are looking at the joint production of the AK-203 uh, rifle uh, as an India-Russia joint venture with the full technology transfer involved. Nothing about the S-400s. Now, one thing that we're looking towards capital, towards Washington, D.C., that is, uh, what, what next, especially what after sanctions were imposed by the Trump administration on Turkish entities for the S-400s, what do you expect vis-a-vis uh, -vis Katsa? On the S 400s, will there be a presidential waiver, or how do you see that? I I personally believe. I mean, one is uh, it is very difficult at this stage to really uh, uh, predict how things, how the uh, cookie will crumble. But I would believe that India is unlikely to, at this stage, walk away from the S four hundred deal. Uh, because of a threat of Katsa or sanctions under whatever AGs they may be announced. The uh, second thing is, I uh, also believe that, I mean, this is my belief personal, that India uh, took up the purchase of uh, S-400 because it determined that this was the most, uh, the best platform available to meet some of its security requirements at probably the best price. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, India is doggedly pursuing its national interest. And uh, I don't see any reason why it should step back from that. That is having said that, uh, I, I really don't know whether there is going to be an expedited delivery of the S-400 or not. These are not uh, privy to the public, as it were. These are decisions that are taken elsewhere. But I also would like to add one thing uh, that I think, you know, the United States clearly wants a containment of China. 
uh, it the whole concept of, from the United States perspective of uh, Indo-Pacific and of the Quad is driven by the desire to try and thwart Chinese uh, security growth as well as growth in general, its influence. From that perspective, a strong India, militarily strong rich India should be in the interests of the United States. And the United States is not rolling out any kind of martial plan for India's development. So somebody else is willing to help India become strong. I think the United States should really stand on the side and clap. That is uh, one argument that is given by analysts. Uh, Dr. Kupriyanov, there is not official, of course, not at the official level, but there is a strand of thought in India because of the situation in vis-a-vis uh, -vis China that you've already given the S-400s to Beijing, you're giving it to us. Uh, how does that really work? I mean, in terms of you balancing between two stools. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, if we uh, don't sell this S-400 to China, uh, they will create their, their, themselves. Well, they have a lot of uh, very able engineers and uh, great uh, manufacturing complex, and they will have to create and to uh, build themselves uh, anti-missile systems, anti-aircraft systems, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to add uh, a bit to uh, what said my friend Nandan, because uh, we in Russia, we very much hope that India will remain firm in its intention to buy the Russian systems because this is a matter of sovereignty from our point of view. Uh, if uh, a country can force you to avoid buying weapons, that it will try to force you to act in the foreign policy area and in its interests. I'm not sure, uh, well, that the United States uh, will be interested in Indian growth uh, maybe for long because, uh, yeah, yes, I remember as uh, United States during the first Obama presidency tried to create, uh, tried to negotiate, negotiate with China uh, to create a G2 world, well, world of China America. And uh, just after uh, after it was cancelled, well, as, uh, Beijing didn't want that, uh, China, uh, United, the United States uh, became to create a bulwark well, uh, from India over to contain China. And uh, so I think that United States policy uh, is dictated by uh, United States interest, first of all. And uh, I can remember when, uh, I'm sorry to be so anti-US here, but well, it's uh, in really, it's very painful question for us, a very painful issue because uh, you can, I can remind you that uh, during the Cold War, uh, uh, in the 70s, uh, when Kissinger, uh, well, I hope you read his book about China and his uh, well, articles about that, uh, when uh, Ch uh, United States became, uh, became a close ally to China during the Cold War against the Soviet Union. And uh, there, uh, the Americans create their own school of thought uh, historical thoughts or so-called California school and the main idea of this California school was that uh, China always was a very humble and very peaceful nation. Uh, it uh, didn't want uh, to make any aggressive war but uh, when China, yeah, maybe you remember, but when China became a, a threat for the United States a menace uh, so United States uh, suddenly changed their mind and now India is the biggest democracy in the world as nat a natural ally of the United States and China is natural enemy. Uh, sure, so I mean, it started in the <laughs> 70s and, and many will also say that uh, the rise of China both militarily and e economically is because of uh, US posture. I want to get quick comments because there's so much to discuss on uh, Russia, India. In terms of Nandan, your assessment of what happened post the summit in 2019 in Vladivostok and the $1 billion credit that was announced for the Russia Far East. We now have uh, track 2.0 with Japan, uh, India and Russia in the Russian Far East as well. 
the Arctic. We talk talking about Vladivostok, Chennai, and the shipping line. But uh, how has that progressed, uh, Nanda, in your assessment? You know, the thing is that uh, what was announced in 2019, obviously, the pandemic has stalled a lot of things. Uh, the lack of physical contact does uh, create uh, problems of its own. The second thing is that, nevertheless, all the governments, uh, particularly Russia and India, have remained active. Uh, you're right, they launched, it is not a track two, actually. It's a track one and a half. Uh, trilateral yeah. with uh, Japan, Russia, and India. They're looking at uh, ways of uh, sort of some innovative ways of cooperation in the Russian Far East. And uh, I think independently of that, India announced its uh, policy uh, of one is the $1 billion uh, credit line. And the second is both Russia and India announced the Vladivostok Chennai uh, maritime route. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it could not be operationalized in the year of the pandemic, but if <clears throat> there's sufficient flow of goods and it proves itself to be viable, and now with Japan in it also, there is even greater chance. Then, <clears throat> sorry, then, uh, you know, uh, we'll come back to the same thing that whether Russia likes it or not, it will be in the Indo Pacific because uh, that route goes through the South China Sea, it goes through the Pacific into the Indian Ocean. And just on a lighter note, so that uh, Alexei smiles a little bit. I remember once upon a time, Asia Pacific was a US concept. Yeah, Indo-Pacific is not a US concept. So I think Russia will come around at some point. Alexei, do we see you smiling? I, I give you the last comments if you want to just uh, round up on the show. Uh, I think that the uh, the issue, the question about uh, Russian-India cooperation uh, in Vladivostok, especially about maritime route, is a part of and about uh, our economic ties is a part of very broader issue, because you know at almost every conference and meeting with Indian colleagues, I hear the mantra about the fact that we have very strong, very good political relations and very weak economic relations, and that this threatens our cooperation, our friendship. It's very strange uh, for me to hear that because we know from history uh, many examples when countries cooperated perfectly on the basis of common strategic interest without serious economic base. Uh, you can recall the British-Japanese alliance of early, uh, the 20th century when, when uh, Britain emerged from its uh, splendid isolations in order to find a strategic ally that would prevent Russia from gaining a foothold on North China. And this plan succeed as the alliance between Britain and Japan turned into to be strategic political alliance that benefited both sides, uh, although there was no broad economic base uh, underneath. And uh, well, and because the First World War trade between Britain and Germany was colossal, uh, really great well but uh what did it didn't stop the war and likewise uh, likewise the sheer volume of trade and interdependence between the united states and china didn't stop them from the starting a new cold war of course it's good when there is an economic base under political relations but if it does not exist it doesn't mean that the political partnership will necessarily fall apart or be fragile as long as common strategic interests remain, it will be strong. And I believe that the opening of North South Corridor and Chennai Vladivostok Transport Corridors is a very good thing uh, simply because it will increase logistical connectivity and immediately lead to a certain increase of trade turnover, uh, as well as creation of free trade zone between India and uh, European Union, or oh, not European, Eurasian Union, sorry. But uh, you need to understand that our trade uh, has growth limits. And even during the Soviet Union, we had a huge trade deficit in favor of China. And now we have a market economy and we simply, simply cannot afford this. And we do not have uh, goods that would be critically dependent on the other side. And we have developing economies that cannot provide the necessary volume of investments for each other. And therefore, we need to look for new areas of cooperation. And I, I think they are in third countries, for example, in Africa, where Russia is now increasing its presence and in the blue economy of the Indian and Pacific Ocean and possibly with the involvement of third countries, uh, maybe on Vladivostok uh, 
<laughs> breach as well. Specific countries as so Vietnam, Japan, Indonesia, for example. Right. Uh, le let me end on that note, uh, Dr. Alexey Kupianov, and I'm just putting out one of uh, our viewers' comments, Bhaskar Gohen, who says India loves uh, Russia. <laughs> Thank uh, you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we love you too. <laughs> As well, Alexey, спасибо большое, очень приятно был встретить с вами, even though it was online. Thank you for joining us from Moscow, Alexey. Danielat. And uh, Nandan, as usual, great having you on the show. Thank you for your time as well. Thank you so much for inviting me. In fact, uh, Salvatore says thank you for bringing up his article. He hopes uh, more people will be reading it. I didn't take that comment. Oh yeah, all the people that matter have read it. <laughs> 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 there you go. Nandan Unikrishnan and uh, Dr. Kupriyanov, thank you again. And thank you all thank you. Uh, our viewers who have uh, either watched the show or have sent in their comments. Do keep them coming. You can also help us uh, financially by supporting us. Go on to our website, Strat News Global. Follow our social media handles on Twitter, on Facebook, and Instagram as well. This is Talking Point on Strat News Global. I'm Amitabh Brevi. Bye-bye, Anita. Thank you very much.